Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Hi, friends. I'm Pastor Kevin from Faith Lutheran Church, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to our online worship service for Sunday, October 16th. This is now the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Today in our texts, we're given a variety of advice on how to live our lives in ways that are faithful to our calling in Christ. Pray always, do not lose heart. This is Christ's encouragement in our gospel today. We're also encouraged to wrestle with the word, to remember our baptism again and again, to come regularly to Christ's table and to find ourselves blessed as we persist in our every encounter with the divine. I pray that these attributes will characterize our faith lives and that through them, we will be nurtured for loving service to others in his name. Our worship begins this morning as we confess our sins and receive the assurance of God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Please join me in the prayer of the day. O Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading assigned for this 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Genesis. We'll read from the 32nd chapter, verses 22 to 31. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Here ends our reading from the Psalms. The second reading assigned for this morning is from 2 Timothy. We're going to start at chapter 3, verse 14, and read on into chapter 4, verse 5. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we prepare our hearts for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later he said to himself, 
Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So our text today is a part of Jesus' response to the Pharisees' question of when the kingdom of God will come. Uh, That's the question that they'd asked him just shortly before this story. And the first part of Jesus' response was to tell them that the kingdom wasn't going to come with soldiers marching and trumpets blaring. He says the kingdom will come suddenly and hiddenly. It will come rather unexpectedly. So then they move on and they ask him where it will come. And I imagine him just shaking his head because that question, it belies the fact that everything that he just said about the spiritual nature of the kingdom of God had just floated right on by them. So he says, where the corpse lies, the vultures will gather, which is as much as to say, I guess you can't stop people from chasing ambulances Some people just can't control their urge to chase after every false messiah, every war or rumor of war, every countdown to Armageddon. It seems like it's hardwired into their nature. And it's with those words still hanging in the air that our text starts. So I think that it's safe to say that Jesus is still reflecting on the nature of the kingdom of God in our reading today. And we can certainly understand why the whole kingdom of God thing was such a a big deal for the people of Jesus' time. They were living under the occupancy of foreign troops. They'd been conquered. Their independence had been stripped away. Their leaders had been killed or disgraced and replaced by puppets who bent their knee to the enemy so long as they'd personally have some semblance of power and no small measure of wealth. The people themselves, they lived in poverty. They were taxed at a rate that was punitive. And those among them who were even rumored to have been engaged in the most trivial of crimes, they were often subjected to humiliating and brutal torture and sometimes public execution. People were starving. Pestilence and drought, floods and earthquakes were common. Crops were uncertain, and even minor sicknesses often led to death. I mean, this was a time in which life was precarious, and the future was uncertain. And in such times, what do you seek? Stability, peace, and bounty. When you are the downtrodden, you seek justice someone to stand up for your rights. You seek the one who will usher in the kingdom of God, justice. In Jesus' parable, that's what the widow is praying for, justice. She has a case against someone who has oppressed her, but she's a widow. She's lost her husband and therefore almost certainly lost her income, her security, her place in the community. And in her culture, without a male relative to stand up for her rights, she is simply invisible, at least from a legal perspective. And yet she takes her case to the local judge, who appears like a a character in an old-fashioned melodrama. He slithers on stage with a black cape and a, a hat, twirling his mustache as the crowd boos and hisses. And just to make sure that we get the point that he is the bad guy, he tells us that much. He says that he neither fears God nor respects people. Well, great. Now that clears things up nicely. Wouldn't it be nice if all judges today were at least that transparent about their own nature so we at least knew what we were up against when we went into their courts? Anyway, this 
unjust judge, he totally ignores the widow's pleas. What does he care about the complaints of this non-person? But she keeps coming back at him. Time and again, she brings her complaints. He's crossing the street and she's calling out. He's, he's having a barbecue in his backyard and she's shouting over the fence. He's in the produce aisle at the store and she's crying out for her justice. And it just goes on and on, day after day, and well into the night until he can no longer stand it. So he tells us that even though he neither fears God nor respects people, lest we'd forgotten from earlier, he has finally finally given in, and he will give her the justice that she sought. He vindicates her and sends his deputies to stand up against those who oppressed her, and her case is finally resolved. And in the context of her story, the kingdom of God has swept over her. And Jesus' message isn't, so you see, God is unjust and doesn't respect people. But if you nag God like the widow did, then you can force God to do whatever you want God to do. No, that is so not the point. In fact, the point is almost exactly the opposite of that. The point is that if even an unjust God will finally give in to the righteous pleas of a powerless nobody and do the right thing, then just imagine how much more assuredly the righteous and all-powerful God will attend to the needs of those waiting for the coming of the kingdom in this life. And as I say this, I know that there are generations out there living in fear and despair. There are those who have known nothing but violence and and pandemic and increasingly violent storms and wildfires and for whom the, the news speaks only and always of the increasing tensions of warring factions on this planet. And they may not use the exact words, but what they want is justice. What they want is a chance at a future. What they want is the coming of the kingdom of God, not just in heaven after we die, but like the words that we pray say, on earth as it is in heaven. And friends, as ice caps melt and waters warm and rise and storms get fiercer and food gets scarcer and political rhetoric gets more divisive and countries invade on the least provocation with weapons designed to annihilate whole cities and countries, who can blame them? They have a case and they're crying out for justice, for a chance at a decent life. And Jesus' parable is written to them just as much as it was spoken for those listening to him so long ago. The message is, hey, you're on the right track. Your complaint is fair. And even though the unrighteous judges of this world are ignoring you, the one truly righteous judge has heard your case and will send justice in due time. So keep praying. Keep working for justice. Keep nagging the unrighteous judges of your day until they're forced to hear you and take action, even if they don't do it for the right reasons. And hold on to the hope. You know, very honestly, I feel for all those who are seeking the coming of the kingdom of God on this earth. And again, whether they put it in those terms or not, I feel bad for those who have sought racial justice an end to poverty, access to medical care, access to education and employment, an end to all kinds of prejudice and bigotry. And I remember the fears of my own youth. I I remember being about maybe seven years old and, and not being able to sleep night after night because I'd heard about the possibility that China would drop the hydrogen bomb on us. That was, what, 60 years ago? And I remember in my early teens being staggered by the crises of overpopulation and the still lingering civil rights injustices. And I remember fears about air and water pollution. And I remember lying in my bed and worrying that the draft might sweep me up and send me to Vietnam. Every generation has faced its own set of existential crises Every generation has wondered, how long, O Lord? Every generation has wondered if the future would be worth stepping into. But somehow, 
through the grace of God, channeled through the creativity and persistence of a, a few faithful people, God has raised up those to stave off the worst of those crises and bring us hope. So I'm not saying we should ignore the things that are happening today, and I'm certainly not saying that we should brush off the concerns of our generation, and, and I'm not saying that we should pray that God will take care of all these things and, and then we just walk away with a silly smile on our faces with no intention of ever lifting a finger to make things better. No, I'm certainly not saying those things. We all need to be praying for justice in our world as diligently as the widow in our story prayed for justice. We all need to be confronting the unrighteous judges day and night. We all need to be doing whatever we can to promote peace and health for our neighbors and our world. We all need to seek God's kingdom here on earth, a kingdom in which nobody is left out or left behind, a world where no one has to beg for justice, but it will be equally available to all. May we seek this kingdom and live in hope, knowing that our God hears our prayers and has compassion for us and is even now bringing this kingdom closer and closer through the power of the Spirit to the glory of our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now our worship continues as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, 
rule with fairness and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. This morning we especially raise to you Inez, Ron, Cheryl, Amber, Jim, Denny, Grace, John, Myrtle, Cecilia, Kim, Marie, Pamela, Brody, Bishop Craig Satterley, Mary Ann, Jerry, Bob, Carol, and Fatima. And along with these, we lift to you all those living or working at the Samaritas Lodge, woods, or terraces. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ, be a light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be a light. Shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope. And now our worship continues as we enter into the offertory prayer. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
now we receive the blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you in truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep? Fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is Lord. Keep